Hello, right now I'm going to be reviewing the Nikkor 55-200mm f4-5.6 to DX lens. Okay, so, here's the lens itself. Right here is the HP 37 lens hood that is supplied with the camera. This is the soft case that is supplied with the camera. This bottom part right here is hard, so it stands up straight. It closes with these two little ties. It's pretty much meant for if you don't have a case and you uh, still want to protect your lens. So right here is the lens cap. The filter size on this lens is uh, 52 millimeters. Okay. So, um... This lens has manual focus and autofocus. There is a toggle switch for autofocus and manual. This lens does have VR, which is short for vibration reduction. Right now I have it off. To turn it, you just switch this to on. Okay, so when you have this lens in manual, which it is right now, this little slider up here turns, and this is your focus ring. This focus ring is a uh, is pretty sticky, which is nice when you're trying to achieve uh, a good manual focus. It's a uh, it, it doesn't it's not slippery at all. It doesn't skip or anything. And when it's in uh, autofocus, it, it's pretty fast. It, I wouldn't say it's fast enough for like bird photography or na nature photography in general, but it is good for some sports, maybe things like a. Uh, not not football because the f stops to a uh, too la or too small, but probably for things like soccer and stuff like that because those don't require lenses with a large f stop. This um this lens, like I said, is f four to five point six. Those are the sharpest points, but I happen to believe that this lens is sharpest at f six. That's what it seems like when I'm using it on a D three hundred. So, right now I'm at 55 millimeters, and this is at 200. That's the ma maximum zoom range. The barrel does extend on this. And now if we go back to 55, it fits back in the lens. So now if you put the lens hood on, here's it at 55. Now I'll go back to 200. There's a length at 200. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like on a D300, then on a D60 with the battery grip. So first, here's a D300. Right here. To put this lens on, you're going to line up this white dot with that white dot. Put it on, and turn till it clicks. And your lens is now attached. Here it is on the D300 doesn't add much weight and doesn't make the camera too long. This is a good walk around lens because it's 55 to 200, which is a pretty good zoom range because 55 is good enough for uh, shooting people and then you can go to 200 to shoot something that uh, requires a zoom. So now if we turn the camera on, right now I'm at f6.3. And since I'm at 55, I can stop it down to f4. But see, as I start to zoom in, the f-stop goes up. So right now, I'm at 200, and you can see the f-stop 5.6. Go back down to f4 when you're at 55. And when you're at 55, you can change it to f whoops, f6. It's not like you're stuck at f4 when you're at 55. And when you're at f, or when you're at 200 millimeters, you're not stuck at f5.6. You can go all the way up to f. 22 if you want, or actually F32, which don't really know why you'd want to do that. If you're maybe if you want to do some trails, slides in the daylight, that's pretty much all you probably use F32 for. There's probably actually a lot of other things, but can't think of any. Okay, so that was that was what it looks like on the D300. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like with the D60 and the uh, BG D10 battery grip. 
which is made by Targus and not Nikon because Nikon for some reason doesn't want to make a battery grip for their D60. I guess it's not considered a semi or a camera that consumers would want a battery grip. Okay, so here's a D60 with battery grip. You can see it's fairly large, but I mean, here's a D300 with with no battery grip, but it's almost as large. So shows goes to show you the size. Another D3 or a D, yeah D300. So let's take this lens cap off. And again, you're gonna line up the white dots. But there's a white dot right there. White dot right there. Same thing. Just put on. Just turn to here. Click. So here it is with the uh, D60. There is at 55. Now we'll go to 200. And back to 55. Without the lens hood. There's 55. And back 200. And the same thing does apply for this camera. Let's see right now. Let's bring this down all the way to f4. And if we start to zoom in, back at f5.6. Back, back at f4. So it goes with all cameras that, that you use with this lens. It's going to show f4 at 55 and f5.6 at uh, 200 millimeters if you don't set the f-stop yourself. So now to talk about the sharpness of this lens. I, I would think this, I mean, this is a pretty sharp lens. It, at 55, it's, that's when it's its sharpest. And at 200, the sharpest point is the center, like most lenses. And it does start to get uh, a little bit out of focus and it starts to warp the image a little bit at 200 millimeters. And that's only when you're using the, you're panning the camera really fast. But, uh, I mean, I've shot some birds and stuff with this camera some sports and it's okay but I try not to use this lens at 200 all the time I strive for either 135 or even 105 because at 105 this is a fairly nice lens for the price especially because you're um, I believe it at 4.6 at 105 and this does start to add weight with the D60 but not really when you have the D300 because you can't feel it because of the uh, the weight that the D300 has itself. That's why it's a, it's a nice walk around lens for either this camera or the D300. And this does have a battery grip, so it even adds more weight. VR does work pretty well at night. It uh, I would say it works best around sunset if you're gonna try to do some low shutter speed. Like I would around. Around twentieth of a second, VR starts to not work anymore. I mean, it's it's, it's really hard to stabilize stuff at one twentieth of a second. But at at, at uh, one sixtieth, it uh, you can really see it VR working. It does consume a lot of battery life though on both the D sixty and D three hundred. But I guess it's something you have to um, encounter when you're taking pictures with VR on. So that was my short review on the. Nikkor 55-200mm f4-5.6 to ED DX lens and DX is meant for cameras that are not the uh, not, that are not the D700, D3, D3S, or D3X or in general cameras that have a 35mm sensor or in Nikon terms cameras that have an FX sensor which is the same size as 35mm film so if you have one of those cameras then this probably isn't the lens for you. You'll you can still use it. It's not like it won't attach or the the camera will still recognize it and everything. It just the characteristics the characteristics of the camera won't be the same as using it on a DX lens or a DX camera. Sorry. So that was it for my review.